What's going on everybody, my name is Rico Richards and welcome back to my channel in this episode of No Time Wasted Learning Dark Table, the light table menu. This is the light table menu and this is where you'll start your journey when trying out dark table. Even though this seems to be the most boring menu of the program, it actually has a couple of great features. On the left side is where the import of images happens. And on the right side are specific things that you can do to an image like adding styles, tagging them and exporting your image after you're done editing them in the darkroom. The first trick I'd like to show you guys is making the thumbnails bigger or smaller. You can do so by holding down Ctrl or Command on Mac and scrolling the mouse wheel button away or towards you. The second trick is to change the sizes using Alt and the numbers. So Alt 1 shows the maximum size, Alt 4 shows the minimum size, Alt 2 lets you increase the size and Alt 3 lets you decrease the size. X will put you in the fixed zoom position which allows you to increase or decrease the amount of images you see. Now if you hit Ctrl X, that's dynamic zoom. That way you can't adjust the lint, but you can use your mouse wheel button to select the next set of images. If you hit Ctrl and zoom in, you will zoom in on all three images. But if you hit Ctrl Shift and zoom, you can zoom in on one image. And when you hit Shift and click inside an image, you can drag it to whichever point you like. Another thing you can do in the light table menu is focus peaking. If you hit Ctrl Shift F, that's focus peaking. That will show you three colors. The first one is yellow, which stands for very sharp. The second one is green, which is a little bit less sharper. And the third one is blue, which is only a little bit sharp. If you want more information on an image, you can use the image information panel, which shows you to which film roll or set it belongs. It shows you the image ID, file name, etc. And it also tells you the camera model, the lens you're using and settings like aperture, ISO and shutter speed. The images can be rated as well from 1 to 5 stars or you can give them a color. Darktable gives them the standard rating that you've defined in the GUI options panel. Which can be accessed by this gear icon and then choosing initial import rating. And you can change that to 1 to 5. The fastest way to reject an image is to select it and then hit R on your keyboard. If you want to rate the image, you can press the stars in the lower left corner or just simply hit 0 to 5 on your numpad. Colors can be added by hovering over the image and hitting the F1 to F5 keys. Once you're done selecting the images you want to keep, you can add pre-made styles to them by using the style drop down menu. If you don't want to add a style, you can move on to the metadata editor and fill in things like title, description, etc. You can tag the images or geotag them, but if you don't want to do all of that, it's time to edit the image using the darkroom. Once you're done, you need to drop down the export selected menu and it will give you some options. One is where you want to store your file and you can change the name by changing the final part of the string. You can change the file format to TIFF for instance when you want to continue working on the image using GIMP while having as much information as possible. You can decide where or not you want the upscale to happen or you can change the profiles. The other options can be changed as well but I suggest you leave them as is. And that's it, I hope you guys like it. If you want to see more click that playlist over there and if you haven't subscribed already please click that button over there. For this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time, doei!